Welcome race fans, this is Garage Land. We will visit some Hawke's Bay Speedway race sheds and talk to some local personalities. Hey Mike, got your snack pizza ready for you. Oh massive thanks Richard. Uh, Any time buddy, just give me a yell if you need another one. Hey guys, shit invasion time. Hey, how's it going, Mike? Hey, Mike. How's it, Jeff? Hey. Well, we've invaded the O'Brien race shed tonight. So, uh, welcome, Regan. Hey, how's it, Mike? Kyra and Chris down the back. As you can see, super stocks everywhere. Brand new one here for Kyron as well. So, we're going to talk to uh, the guys about that, see what they've been up to. We can see that a lot of uh, panel work and new steel has gone into these race cars. Kyron's hard out trying to get his one ready. So sit back and enjoy. You guys have been dirt rats for quite a few years. Chris, you really are the reason why these guys are involved in it. Yeah, I've been a uh, car all my life, virtually, you know, like since I was about 12. So, yeah, and I met my wife at the Speedway, and we've had two boys, you know. Now, you were saying that um, you started out with a jalopy car. Yeah. That's an old term, eh? You don't hear them called jalopies <laughs> no, anymore. No, no, and there was a lot, so actually Wally True and uh, Richard Houston were racing as well then. We know Richard's been racing since the Ark was built. Yeah. He's still going strong in the street stock class, but it's great to see second and now third generation drivers coming through. Yeah, I mean, um, I, I, I wasn't sort of a fan for many stocks, but for adults, but for kids, I mean, you've only got to look at the young kids around New Zealand that are racing them, and Corrin's one of them, you know. And they hop in these things, and we, we actually put Corrin in the stock over in Harrisville the other year, then we thought, oh, here we go, we've got what's up the year, and Blow me down, he just peeled the road, and it was like unbelievable. They've come a long way in the 30 or so years that you've been involved in the sport. Oh, yeah, well, I actually had a stock car. I actually, in those days, it was only A and B grade, you know, and um, I was a B grader in those days, and they go even faster. The stock cars go faster than what we used to go. But I reckon he's a B grader, isn't he? <laughs> he's a B grader, mate. <laughs> oh, righty, eh? Yeah. Now, Regan, you started out in street stocks as well, but your dad was saying that um, about two meetings in, you were wrecking too many parts on the cars. He was sick of working on them, so they got you a stock car. Yeah, we um, we bought our first street stock off Aaron Heimunger, um, an old um, Falcon, and yeah, it only lasted three meetings um, and destroyed that. And so we decided to build another Falcon. And we built that in about three weeks, eh? Yeah. It was me, Dad, and Mark Cross, and um, then raced that, and that only lasted a season. So um, we built a good street stop, which pushed the old man out of them. So we built one car, and um, yeah, raced that for a season and a half, and wrecked that one. So we decided to get a stock car. The street stop class was a good feeder class. It's a bit like on numbers around the country now. But definitely back in those days, the progression from street stop to stock car was sort of auto drivers doing that. Yeah, it was, there was um, heaps of people come from street stocks to stock cars. I think that's where it was cheap to start out in a street stock. Um, but yeah, I think now the street stock's getting more more technical and they're not as much crashing and bashing, so people were staying in them. And people were just going straight to stock cars. Because a street stock, you can, you can see some of them up $7,000. Put a stock car up, you know, for that, a cheap one anyway, for that price. The interesting thing that you guys were saying too was, I said, Looking at your car here and the state that it's in at the moment during the off season, I said that's such a lot of work, and you said not as much work as a street stock. Yeah, well, street stocks you're doing guards, doors. You know, you got all your boot panels. Um, you know, you're reskinning. Well, we used to reskin a street stock in the off season, so you know you're doing all that with a stock car. You reskin a stock car. You put a side rail and a bumper, and you know there's a couple of weeks work with a street stock, cutting it all the panels off, putting all new panels on so it looks straight. So yeah, that was a a couple months ago. The pinnacle for you in stock cars was that 3NZ a few short years ago, maybe four years ago I think it might have been when you had that 3NZ on the side of the car. Yeah. But then I, I remember you uh, winning a meeting at Hawke's Bay and I think you got a $1,000 prize money, I can't remember the meeting. Curry Cup. Curry Cup. Yeah. And you said, great, there's the money for the panel work through the off season. So you can really replace a lot of parts on those stock cars and super stocks for not too much money if you put the work in yourselves like you guys do. Yep. You know, that, when I won that Curry Cup when we got the thousand bucks, like that was good money to help us in the off season to rebuild the car, which ended up building the new car. Um, that paid for the steel to start building that one. Um, so yeah, it was, you know, a thousand bucks went a long way in steel. So 
that was a good start. Corin, you're sitting on uh, your new car there, so we're looking forward to seeing that coming out in the season. Um, you must be looking forward to it. Yeah, I can't wait. I haven't raced for a while, so it's good to be back out there. A bit of smack talk between <laughs> father and son, talking oh, it up yeah. a little bit, you know? Yeah, Some talking that up. <laughs> now, I heard an interesting comment that he's not allowed a team race till he's 20. No, I said to him, he's nearly that now. Yeah. I said, you're not team racing until you're 20. Goes, Sweet, that's next year. And I went, wow, it is too, it's next year. So, yeah, I just thought 20 to let him get used to the car for a couple of seasons, but yeah, it's only one season and then he's into it. But hey, if he, he can pedal a car, so as long as he learns to drive this year, and then he can do what he wants next year. That's, that's why we're not, we're not going to board on the engine, he's going to have a sand the engine, you know, because he's got to learn about the car before he, you know, it's the old scenario, you've got to learn to walk before you can run, you know. Exactly, and you see a lot of guys with horsepower overdriving, yep. Yep. and it's about getting bad of the track. If you don't get those wheels gripping on that track, you're not going to go forward. Yeah, well, exactly. a lot of people, well, a lot of people were surprised about when we got this car off Shane Bracken, you know, you know <coughs> it wasn't very fast and rah, 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 and then we sat down and we've, we've done quite a lot of, Work with it, you know, with um, people's help, and um, we're certainly not off the pace on it, right? Definitely, those last couple of meetings, the car was hooking up nicely. Yeah. When you first put it on the track, you can see it had those little handling issues, but that's always going to happen with a new car. Yeah. Someone sets it up for how they like to drive it, you're going to set it up for how you want it, and we saw that towards the end of the year. Yeah. Yeah, we did um, end up, uh, about four meetings to the end, we ended up changing the steering box. I was sort of driving it like this. So we tilt the steering box, I was driving like a normal car, and a uh, whole different car to drive. Um, so I can't wait to team race it again, having a comfy steering. Um, but yeah, it was heaps different to drive from when it was at the start of the season. Changed the suspension set up and everything. And um, yeah, we just can only improve. Regan, the 52 car oh, is looking a bit naked at the moment. We can see plenty of the new steel work that you've put in. So we were talking about it before that these cars don't really get too badly bent up. But certainly a lot of the cosmetic stuff on the outside of the panel, you've got to replace it. Yep. Um, yeah, along here we've just done a new exhaust cover. Just to, um, I was going to get it all chromed up, um, just to put a bling in the car. Um, but yeah, hey, most of the time it's just your side rails. Your slight the outriggers might get a bit bent. In the super stocks, it's um, not as bad as a stock car. You replace five of them in a season in a stock car. Um, that's the only second one out of last season. So yeah, new steel work going into the car. Um, new overrider bar we put on here and we'll chrome that up and a new back bumper chrome um, overrider bar on that as well. So um, yeah we'll just get it looking a bit more super stocky and blingy. Pretty solid looking uh, rear bar on this car. Yeah, back bumper, um, it's got to be solid. Team's racing, that's all I use is my back bumper, I hardly use the front bumper. Yeah, so um, yeah, it's got to be strong to take the hits. Now traditionally in Speedway, green is supposed to be unlucky. Uh, I know. Last year I didn't like the green, but we didn't want to muck with the car too much. We wanted to get to know it first, um, but it won't be green this year. Are you going to give us a hint as to what it's going to be? Um, a different colour. A different colour. <laughs> can, we, can we talk about the, the body that's going to go on it? Yeah, hey, we're, gonna, we're going away from the old traditional uh, um, Ford pop body that was on there. Um, this year we're just going to go to a, a Ford Y body, uh, more of the super stock look. Just um, hey, second year super stock, so we thought let's bling it up, double wing, do everything that everyone else has done, and just go from there. And then I've never raced with a Ford wide body before. Well, I like that Ford pop look. I like the retro look on this car. It's yeah, really made it stand out. <laughs> yeah, um, we're going to keep it. Um, we'll probably um, strip it down and paint it up the same colour as the other body, and and uh, for the old man, every now and then we'll chuck it on. Do, do you think maybe you stood out a little bit too much with that body on there? Uh, oh, it stood out alright, well, everyone knew who it was and where it was. Um, but yeah, I just go for a Ford Y just a super stock look really, because that's what a super stock, um, the people with a Ford Y um, looks like. With that body they thought the car was 50 years old, but um, that was only the pit crew. Just the driver getting up towards <laughs> that. <laughs> yeah. um, the motor, what work's been done to the donk? Uh, I'm just going to send the way, just do rings and bearings in it. Um, not too much to that, we'll just change the rod bolts and put a new set in there. Um, but pretty much the same as last year. Um, we'll probably spend most of the season just doing setup and might spend a little bit more on the motor next season. But this season we just want to sandblast the car and get it back, uh, back in shape and, and leave the motor till next season. 
we're, ha- we're pretty happy with how it went at the end of last season. Yeah, definitely those yeah. last couple of meetings, the car was really coming on, you could see that. Yeah. Um, bit of talk on McGaws about tyres um, and tyre suppliers. I know you're probably a bit in favour of having more than one choice. Yeah, I just think, um, you know, you've got uh, Cardwell's is the only one that's able to bring them in. So he can set the price on what he wants for those tyres and it's not really fair. We, we race those tyres, um, we don't have to race Hoosiers, but it's the preferred choice and, and we have to only buy them through him. Um, or he has got other suppliers around, but at the same cost. And we know that he does get them in a hell of a lot cheaper than what he sells them for. So if someone else could open them up, it might drop that price down and uh, make it more affordable for other people to get into super stocks. Yeah, definitely. Any time you can make something more affordable, especially with the way Speedway is going, it is an expensive sport. Sponsorship a little bit harder to get in this day and age, you know, with the climate here, the economic climate in New Zealand. So any time you can save costs, it's got to be an advantage. Yep, definitely. Um, hey, like we come from stock cars, and we went to super stocks for the cost. Um, you know, it's always good going fast and V8 in your shit. But my stock car was getting costly to run, and we were buying new road tyres, which were costing more than a Hoosier. Um, so you know, if the Hoosier price, even on some of them, came down, um, then more stock car guys might look at changing to, to super stocks. Um, but yeah, hey, cost uh, if it's a costly class. You're soon going to lose people. Uh, it's a couple of years since you raced the mini stock. I know you've had uh, a meeting in a super stock last year, maybe in the stock car the year before that. This is a new car for you uh, from Rotorua, so it's great to see another super stock coming here to Hawke's Bay. I bet you can't wait to get this put together and get it out there. Nah, it's hanging out really, just want to get back on the track. Race yep. think it's going to race with Dad. Mm. Do what I want to do, really. Carry on that smack talk, you reckon? <laughs> yeah, I've already been told that. A few women's and told to go faster for me. Now, uh, you were talking about the seat and the battery box in this car. You've made a few alterations to it already just to make it safer for yeah. your racing. Yeah, there's just, uh, just a few things I don't feel comfortable with in the car, so that's the main thing to feel comfortable while you're racing, so I'll just change it around a bit. Maybe Dad's a bit worried that if he gives you a big serve, he might hear you. Yeah, he can be a bit softy sometimes. Um, just tell us a little bit about the car. Um, you can see the motor there sitting at the front. So is that ready to go, or does that need to go away to be freshened up? Um, it's just going away just to get the basic refreshing for this season. I don't need to go out there and win everything. I just want to go out there and do laps. Finish races. Yeah, yeah. Tell us uh, what sort of motor is it? A uh, Toyota V8s. So uh, I think they're pretty much the same as the Lexus. And yeah, there's, well, some people run this, but we'd, we'd like to run a cheaper, cheaper version. And the body for this car? Uh, it's just a Ford Y, normal Ford Y, so yep. that's what Dad's going to be running. Yep. And uh, just having a single, single pedal wing on it. Are you guys going to run team colours? Nah, nah. So he's going to be 52, the normal 52 that yep. Regan always runs, you're going to be 25. Yeah. Yeah. So a bit of a flip. Yeah, it's just a bit of a flip. Great. 25 used to be green, it's not as in street socks, so I just carry it on. Yep. Third generation, it's great. Yeah. I say it all the time, it's, it's great to see third generation races coming through. I'll tell you what, we can't be too far away from some fourth generation races out there in Auckland. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, don't say that, mate. <laughs> You're a while away yet. Maybe not with Kyron, but yeah. you'll be a while away yet. Yeah, there something. must be some out there that are just about ready to come on the track. Well, you know, let's not go down there. We'll, we'll stay off that track. Can't afford motorsport if you're going to go down that road. Yeah, yeah. Um, you got the car for a good price, it looks pretty solid car, at the moment you're replacing some of the panel work on it, um, just to uh, tidy up the, the steel, what other things are you going to do to it before then, apart from ob- the obvious like paint and uh, styling? Um, really just make it comfy for me, we bought it pretty much ready to race without a motor, so once the motor's ready we can put that in, and a few general set up, set up options to it, and then that's, yeah, ready to go. How much of the work can you do yourself? Oh, yeah, most of it really. No, 90%. The only thing that we don't really do is the engines, you know, like um, we've got a, quite a dozen. Like, you know, yeah. Um, other than that, we do all our own work. Yeah. A hands on driver is always going to be a better driver, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, it's important to be able to put the work into the race car yourself, and it helps you to understand the race car yeah, as well. well. Yeah. If you do it yourself, you know what you've done, and you can change it. If you're giving it to someone else to do, you don't actually know how they've done it, what they've done to it. You know, it saves money as well, it saves them the cost of doing it yourself. I know it's early days yet, but you're looking to um, go to a few away tracks during the season as well? Yeah, 
Hopefully, just a local round um, Palmerston North Rotorua, um, just for the season or two, just to get used to racing one of the cars and big fields. Yep. And we should have a good field here in Hawke's Bay, I think we'll have over 20 cars. Yeah, I hope so. It would be good to have a few cars out there, that's for sure. There's another new one um, we were talking about just off camera, but I'm not quite sure who got it. Um, I'm not too sure of the guy's name, but I just come from Stratford. So yeah, we got it. Out there. And then you've got guys like Matt Kwok who've, who've changed over to a tank. We'll see Zach Lawrence out. You know, Zach, I think yeah. he just made it at the last meeting there after us waiting probably about three years for him to come <laughs> yeah. out. One lap, Zach. Yeah, but, uh, yeah so he stuck up to his name. Marty Kwok, isn't he? No, I don't know. No, it'll be good to see Matt Kwok. Maybe something different. Yeah, I've well, got, it will. Since I've been around, I can't remember a tank stock car apart from Graham Hollywood at Miami, so it'll be different to see one out there. Is that, that was the same one that Beetle had, wasn't it? Oh, no. No, that's right. Beetle had one, but no, it wasn't the same. Thanks, Corin. No, Look forward cool. to seeing you out there. Oh, yeah, cool. Thanks. But all this talk about racing is making me hungry. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, I think we'll have a bite from our sponsor. Hey, guys. How are you? Yeah. See you at Speedway and we see you then. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Get everywhere. Yeah. I'm used to coming to your address, Regan. <laughs> hey. Okay, shall we go through? All right. Got a new trainee. Hey, how's it, mate? Hey. And we'll get weary and we'll get. Shameless sponsor promotion time. Limited time only, get in and buy a Hell's Pizza. Made out of kangaroo meat. Sure to put a bounce in your step. <laughs> you uh, told me an interesting story before about Regan and the street stocks. Yeah, when, when he first started, um, it was about his fourth meeting and I was coming first to my Cortina and he had his Falcon. Anyway, coming into the last, into turn three on the last lap and I pulled over to let him go through to get his first one and Lo well, and behold, he smoked me into the fence. <laughs> and I went up to him, I said, Bro, what did you do that for? And he goes, You've always told me never trust anyone, and I don't trust you. Oh, he's been the last person you trusted, isn't he? Um, yeah, I don't trust him at all, I don't trust no one. <laughs> hey, I'm only going to trust him. Yeah. yeah. It's the old story about the race face, put that helmet on, you know, people change, personalities change when you get in the car. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. You ask Clyde Pritchard, he'll tell you about it. <laughs> Clyde Pritchard went up to him up in uh, Rotorua at the World of Stops and said to Regan, am I safe to go through the inside? And uh, around the outside, and Regan goes, you can go around the outside, mate, no problem. Well, poor old Clyde went through the inside and Regan smoked him. <laughs> well, just go around the outside, not the inside. Do you have a little black book, Regan? No, it's up here. It's all up there? Yeah, I've still got a few stuck up there that, that they've got me and I haven't got them back. But, um, there's probably plenty more out there that have got me up there than, than what I have. Revenge yeah. is always a dish best served cold though, isn't it? When it's <laughs> long forgotten, except by the person who's going to dish it back out. Yep, that's it, yeah. Some people say, what was that for? I remember back <laughs> two or three years. But yeah. It's been awesome talking to you guys, but before we, uh, before we end the show, i just got to ask you about the Hawkeyes. Two awesome seasons with the Hawkeyes. Only one defeat over those two seasons. Predictions for the coming year? Uh, go to Palmerston and win it this time. Yeah. Um, yeah. Hey, we went to Palmerston last year. Um, I had no expectations. It was my first time to come away with a third trophy, sash, beating the Panthers. Um, I couldn't ask for anything more. So this year, um, hey, hopefully we can go down there. We've got a good group of boys, good group of cars. Um, go down there and clean it up. Hopefully. Great um, team camaraderie this the last couple of years. You know, the, the team spirit's just grown and grown. You've got a guy like James Buckrell now as your manager. He's really proactive with how it all goes together. So it just fits the whole, it's almost like the uh, the set is complete. Yeah, well, hey, it all starts from the top, doesn't it? So if you've got a good manager doing their job, it's just going to filter through the team. And as a driver, um, it makes our job easier. Um, we just got to focus on racing. We don't need to worry about uh, accommodation or anything. James and Mike Groom, they sort the whole lot. Um, awesome two guys to be in a team to be running it. So. Um, and then with the rest of the boys, we know we just got to turn up and do our job on the track. So no, it's awesome having them. You're a long time uh, Maulers teamster. They won the Peter Barry this last season. Did you feel a little bit left out because you weren't a part of that? Nah. I, like, hey, we had our goes when I was in the team. Um, it was good to see the guys win the Peter Barry this year. The smile on their faces was just um, after the first rain out with them losing. 
um, to go along and win it. The, the smile brought back memories of when I was in the Maulers and we were down in Wellington and getting second in the champs. And um, hey, it was good to see them do that. It was awesome. It was a massive turnaround for them, wasn't it? Because really, it was two bad defeats that first night before it got rained out. Yeah. They were gone. They were history. Yeah. But and that restaging, oh, they went all away. Hey, that that restaging, like um, you couldn't ask for a better team. First time I've seen the Maulers work as a team. And uh, hey man, they went out there and just dominated, um, which was good to see. So young guys stepping up um, next season, hey, hopefully they'll be just as strong, if not stronger. Hey, uh, great talking to you guys. Thanks, Chris. And uh, let's sure. hope these two don't keep you too busy throughout the season. <laughs> no, all the best. Uh, well, actually, I've um, noticed, uh, apart from doing all our little tweaks and tracks through our car, you know, we didn't really do a lot. We um, It's not as much as a stock car right now. Maybe they're a bit softer than super, so I don't know. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll see over the next season. But, oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Corin, we want to wish you all the best, mate, for your okay. debut year in the super stock. Keep it clean and uh, keep it mean. Yeah. Keep it as clean as he can. <laughs> <laughs> Chief's got a big shed, you can store your car there if you have to. <laughs> well, b before we do sign off, there's just one thing I'm going to get you two to do, and that is to have an arm wrestle. <laughs> we can uh, eliminate some of that smack talk right now. Right now then, can you feed down after eating that pizza? <laughs> I'll get you to do it over here. <coughs> We're a makeshift little table here. Well, I've got a bucket shoulder. <laughs> no excuses. It's game on. Set. Go. <laughs> oh, hey. Corin's face is a lot redder. <laughs> oh. Yeah, one up. Yeah. Well there you go, Just this is the O'Brien race shed, we've had some fun, we've talked some talk, we've seen the cars, see who we've got next time on Garage Land. <laughs>